hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel and today I'm going to be doing a model review it's been a while since I've last done one of these and that's because the priority of course has been to get on with the new layout so because of that I've obviously not been able to do any filming model railway wise but now that the layout is now up and running we've got to the stage where the track's been laid down I can now in between working on the layout actually do review videos and so the first of these to be filmed on the new layout is of the brand new Acura scale class 37 this model that I'm looking at today is 37425 in the regional railways livery so without further ado we're gonna dive straight in because I'm just dying to get this model out of the box and run it So here we have 37425 out of the box and down on the layout. Now, I have to point out and be honest that it has taken a few weeks for me to get to this point where I can actually look at the detail, let alone run it. That was because one of the buffers on this model fell out. I don't understand where it had gone because I spent quite a bit of time looking for that missing buffer. All the buffers were intact when I unboxed the model and when I took photos of it to share on the Facebook page looking back through the photos all the buffers were indeed intact on the model but despite looking all over the place for it spending quite a bit of time looking for it I could not find it so I got in touch with Acura Scale about this and they sent me a replacement buffer but I had to wait a week or so to get a replacement part so it has been quite irritating really that that should happen but I don't hold it against the Cura scale because give them credit they sent a replacement part out to me and I have glued that buffer into place, only a small amount of glue on the end I used some Revel contactor and it has still got the spoon buffer working as well but you know whether or not they used adhesive in the factory I don't know if they did it couldn't have been brilliant but the issue has been sorted now and so I can now actually get this model running around the lot and actually enjoying it. As for the model itself, straight out of the box, it's a smooth runner. Beautifully smooth in both directions. Which is how you want it to be formed when you get this model. It's no good spending all this money on a model and then finding out it either doesn't work or doesn't run very well. It has working direction and tail lights as well, as well as interior lighting, as you can see in these clips here. Also, it has the illuminated cab dolls as well, a feature that I very much like. And also, it appears that this model is fitted with some sort of stair life capacitor, because... I mean, I don't use DCC, I have DC, but I noticed that stopping the model after running, it would be a while before the interior lighting and even the head and tail lights would go off so I wasn't expecting that little feature but it is nice and so now moving on to the detail of the Acura scale class 37 first of all you have tension lock couplings these are the slim tension lock ones which will be replaced with magnetic couplings before I get this pulling anything it has sprung buffers as well. I don't personally care for sprung buffers that much, but they're there. That now is a feature that seems to be the norm for most models. But I do like though how you've got this painted detail on them. And that is a very nice feature to have, as per the prototype. They didn't need to be painted necessarily on the model, but they have done. It just shows the attention to detail that a Curascale put into their models. All the details as well, all being separately fitted I should add, you have lamp irons, you've also got the aerials on the top of the nose there, I've read warning flashes crisply printed on the front of the nose, 
you've got the jumper cable as well and hats off to Akira Scale they have really captured and nailed the look of the 37 they've also captured every bit of detail that you see on the loco as well they've especially got the face right which is the first thing that you're going to see with any locomotive whether you're stood at a station or on a line side spot wherever the first thing you'll see is the front of the loco you've also got the jumper socket there that's separately fitted and that's been painted you've also got the separately fitted air horns on the roof of the loco you've got glazing in all the cab windows you've also got the overhead warning flashes there on the front of the loco by those cab windows and you've got separately fitted window wipers as well the driver's door has separately fitted handrails and they're not moulded like I say they are separately fitted and they are made out of metal as well you've got a door handle there that's a separate part you've also got that warning sticker there on the door again crisply and neatly applied also you have these door treads just here now they if I understand correctly they were made using a metal that's used in the I think medical surgery I believe to get the detail on it and the detail that's been put onto those treads is just absolutely fantastic again it's the attention to detail like that that Akira Scale put into their models. You've also got the detail on the bogies, painted axle boxes and springs, as you can see. Very nicely picked out as well, if I say so myself. The detail on the axle boxes as well is just fantastic. You've got these bits of detail here in the bogies, which, if I understand correctly, I think that they're compressors, I think. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think they're compressors. And the pipe work coming out of those, which is separately fitted, it's also been picked out of painted. You've also got the bogey chains as well, as you can see here. And the bogey chains, they've actually been revised. So they went and changed the design of them, as opposed to what they were originally on the Deltics, because there were issues with the bogey chains coming off I believe, coming loose even. I know mine when it arrived there was a loose bogey chain and I fixed it and credit to it I've not had any issues like that since with that model but it's good to see that they have changed the design of that and again it's a fantastic bit of detail to have. Even the footstep is a separately fitted bit of detail as well and that mesh grill there on top of the footstep that is separately fitted as are those other bits of mesh detail there as you can see where the steps are those have been separately fitted they're not moulded they're separately fitted bits of detail and I think there might be brass possibly but regardless what they're made of those bits of detail are there and again like I say separately fitted didn't have to be but they are Another feature with this model is that this section of the roof is designed to be removable. So to demonstrate it by lifting it out, it's held in place with magnets and this is so that you can get easy access to the circuit board there. So basically you can fit a DCC decoder. And it's great to see that manufacturers are doing this now with their models to give easy access to fit in this. So that way you don't have to take a body off. Sticking with the roof, the exhaust ports are separately fitted bits of detail as you can see. Also just look at these bits of detail here. Where the latches are that open up so that you can get to the engine and lift it out if it needs work doing to it. I mean that is all detail that doesn't necessarily need it to be there and could be moulded detail but it's not. It's all there like on the prototype and it's separately fitted. 
Plus you've also got the roof grille and that is made out of metal and just look at the mesh grille on that. I mean the detail on that just looks absolutely superb. And then you've got a fan underneath it which is separately fitted and that has been painted and that just looks stunning. You've also got some rivet detail on the roof as well which of course is moulded detail but still nice detail otherwise. Even right down to the fuel gauge on the fuel tank that's got detail on it and just look at the detail on that I mean that is just phenomenal. The livery application on this model is absolutely gorgeous. They've got all the colours on the livery correct. You've got the two shades of blue, you've got the dark blue on the body side and then you've got the lighter blue stripe in the middle there. Plus you've got the white and then the grey there on the bottom. The colours have been very well applied and very neatly applied as well because there's no blemishes or any errors in the paintwork. Also you've got the low casualty number 37425 crisply printed on the cab sides and then you've got the regional railways logo again crisply printed on the body sides and they've got the logo and the style of the numerals for this loco bang on. You also have the accessory bags that come with the model you have the etched nameplates first of all concrete Bob and Sir Robert McAlpine the real 37425 has two different names on it again being these two Sir Robert McAlpine and concrete Bob I don't know why it has two different names but it does and those I shall be fitting later on and the detail on those looks splendid and then in this accessory bag you have the snow plows which I shall be fitting on the model because the real loco has them and the air pipes etc as well as screw link couplings and what I like about these is that the snow plows looking at them they don't rely on clipping into a NEM pocket so that is a better design than what Batman has done with their 47s and 37s. More realistic as well, but also it still allows you to have your locos coupling up to stock. So that's pretty much it then for the Akira Scale 37. There are some other bits of detail that I could cover. you got the grills on the cab sides where the noses are. Separately fitted sanding gear and even the interior detail is all picked out and painted but I've pretty much covered most if not all of the detail otherwise that this model has and I think you guys have probably heard all this before anyway because there are reviews on the Akira Scale 37 already on YouTube so what we need to do now is to give this model a good running on the layout because so far it's only just been running up and down on this one particular section so I'm going to get the slim tension lock couplings replaced over with a magnetic coupling and I'm going to get this loco pulling some stock. In the future I will look at getting some matching regional railways coaching stock for this loco to pull but until then it will have to pull my other stock that I've got. So for this review I think I'm going to get out my BR Blue and Grey Mark 1 rake which I think will go very nicely behind this loco. So I'll see you in a bit.
So you've all just seen the Akira Scale Class 37 running around the layout with the BR Blue and Grey Mark 1s. And this is the first time on the layout I've actually run an actual train on the layout. A full length one, at least. So there's a bit of history for you there. Now the layout it is in the stages of adding scenery and detail, which I will be started on very soon. So keep an eye on the channel, of course, for when part 3 of the new layout build comes out. Obviously this is not something that will happen overnight, it will take time. But when this layout is finished, it has all got scenery and detail on it, which I'm really immensely looking forward to. I think it's going to look absolutely stunning. So obviously, of course, <laughs> it's going to look a lot better than as it is now at the moment. So it'll look quite something, I think. But again, that'll take time. But as for the Akira Scale 37 itself, what is there left to say about it? I mean, I'll take that one issue with the buffer to one side. Akira Scale has sorted that problem. Yes, it's been a little bit irritating. I've had to wait a week or so for replacement parts to turn up so I can actually play with the model. But there you go. It's just one of those things. But I think it is a superb model. Is it the definitive Class 37? I would say yes. I think that this is definitely the best 37 that you can buy. I mean, all this detail and all this innovation that you're getting for a model that's priced at just 169 quid. Look at Batman's new Class 37, that's now just over 200 quid. So I think you're definitely better off spending your money, in my opinion, on the Akira scale model. Would I buy another one? Because this is the fourth Class 37 I've got now. I wouldn't necessarily be selling off my three other Batman 37s off, I'd be keeping those. The Curious Girl has already announced their next batch of 37s. I do quite fancy the Civil Engineers Libby 37 myself, but we'll see. Because there might be other things I might want, but I wouldn't say no necessarily to a Civil Engineers Libby 37. I think that's something that I might have to do. And like I say, I will get some matching stock for this locomotive, but until then, it will just have to pull my other stock. But I think we can all agree it still looks nice, even with the BR Blue and Grey set, in my opinion. So, in my opinion, if you can still get your hands on one of the current batch of Akira Scale 37s, I'd say definitely go and bag one. Or, definitely, I would get yourself one of the new Class 37s that Akira Scale has announced in the next run. So I definitely recommend getting one. So perhaps maybe place a pre-order for one or wait till they come out. Regardless. <laughs> you know, it's definitely something worth buying. Definitely been worth the wait this model has. And I'm glad I bought it. I shall continue to be spending my money on Akira Scale products. And if the Deltic 92 and the 37 are this good, I'm looking forward to the manners and etc. I've already got the 89 and the book jumper on pre order, looking forward to those. Definitely tempted with one of the manners, and I think I'll definitely have to get maybe one or a couple of the Akira Scale 31s and the 50s. And I look forward to seeing what else that they'll be bringing out in the near future. So hats off to a Cura Scale for their 37, I think they're on to a winner. If this model doesn't scoop any awards, I'll be shocked. So that's it for this review on the Cura Scale Class 37. Thank you all so much for watching it and I hope you've enjoyed. I will be uploading review videos in between doing these videos on the layout whilst I'm doing scenery and detail work on it etc. So, do feel free to post a comment, hit the like button, and while you're at it, feel free to subscribe if you like what you see, and check out all my other content that I have on the channel, because I ain't all model railways. I do have my other hobby as well, going out and filming the real stuff. But thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. But until then, take care. Bye for now.